Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is Laura coming to you with another short video. I hope that everyone under the sounds of my voice, I hope that this video finds you safe and well. And today I just wanted to pop in just for a few minutes of your time just to talk about compassion. Compassion. What is compassion? Do you think that the world has been a compassionate place? Or do you think the world could use a little bit more compassion? Are you a compassionate person? If so, praise God. If not, what can you do? What can you do on your sphere of influence in this world to increase your compassion? Because we all have to start with ourselves before we can have an influence on someone else. We must reflect and check ourselves first. And so there was a song back in the 70s that said, um, what the world needs now is more love. And I agree with that. But I think what the world needs now is more compassion as well. Somewhere along the way, we needed more compassion. We longed for more compassion. But it came up short. For so many communities, they've looked to their fellow man for compassion and found that the lights were dim or turned out and compassion had vacated the building. And so what caused this rift, what caused this decline in compassion for our fellow man? Well, it all started when the world became a place of selfishness instead of selflessness. When the world became a place of where it's all about me and mine and I'm going to get mine, and I don't care if you get yours. I'm going to step on you in order to get what I want by any means necessary. You get yours, however, but after I get mine, I don't care how you get yours. And I don't care what happens to you after I get mine. And so it took a little bit of shaking in this world. Something that came into our lives in 2020 and placed us all on an even playing field, placed us all in the same boat, in which if everyone is not rowing towards the same goal, no one's going to get anywhere. And what I'm referring to is this pandemic. This has been a very traumatic time and a very, one of the, the worst times that most of us have ever experienced in our lives. Very trying, very traumatic. But I want you to think about something. For those of you who've only experienced this for six weeks, six months, I want you to know that there's a community out there of people that this has been a lifestyle. Do you hear me? This has been a lifestyle. There are people who've been living like this, that this was their norm, not for just six months, but six years, maybe more than 10 years maybe even more than 20, sometimes a lifetime. And there was a community, either they were by choice or they were forced into the very terms that we're throwing around today and finding it difficult to deal with. And what are those terms? Those terms are quarantine, social isolation, shut in, shut down, social distancing, Believe it or not, this has been the norm for people. And once this pandemic is all said and done, this will continue to be their norm. As you go on with your life and the freedoms and everything that you appreciate, there will be people that this will still be their norm and has been for many years. And they've survived and they've thrived, but it's been difficult. So take the community of gang stalkers or a community of people who have some sort of a chronic illness in which they have to self-isolate or social distance. Then add on to that the pandemic. And then I want you to turn the heat up to the most, to the 500 degree. And so for those of the, for those of us that are experiencing this for the first time, how will you emerge with more compassion for those who walk in these shoes every day? 
You know, the saying is, don't criticize a man's walk in life until you've walked a mile in his shoes. Or don't criticize a man's walk in life until you've taken the same dose of medicine, that bitter medicine that he's had to take. And then tell me, after you go through the experience, what do you think about it now? And so I want to ask those of you out there, maybe you're not a part of the gang stalking community. Maybe you're not a part of the community that deals with chronic illnesses. How will you walk away this, from this experience changed and with more compassion? So what is compassion? First of all, compassion is a feeling of sympathy, empathy, and pity for the misfortunes of others. And for those who've never walked in these shoes and never had to experience this, so many times we've heard the stories, but we found it unbelievable, baffling. We couldn't believe that it was that bad. We found the stories totally untrue. And we looked at those who deal with this every day as people who were chronic whiners and complainers who needed to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps and get themselves together. But now that you've swallowed the bitter pill, and now that you've rowed in the same boat, and now that you've walked a mile in the same shoes, do you still think that way? And so again, I urge you as you move through life and your life returns to some sense of normalcy, which we don't know what that normalcy will be, will you be more compassionate for your fellow man, for the misfortunes of your fellow man? Will you open your eyes and your hearts and your hands wider with more compassion than ever before? Because you know what? I tell you this, that what impacts one person will eventually impact us all because no man is an island. And when something like this happens in which you can't step on it, step over it, lie or manipulate to get what you want, you can't, be, you can't reckon with nature. You can't reckon with nature. And that's the lesson from this, that we're all in it together. And that maybe it took something like this to help us to get back to the way things should be with our heart conditions. You know, because lack of compassion and selfishness is a condition of the heart, my friend. It's a condition of the heart. And it won't go away until we self-reflect on ourselves and make that change, that change that starts with the heart, that starts with, you know what, I'm going to look to my left, I'm going to look to my left, my left and my right, and I'm going to have compassion for my fellow man. And instead of thinking about how I'm going to move forward in life and move forward on my goals and the next thing that I want, I'm going to start taking into consideration the wants and the needs of others and putting others above myself. And not just as some kind of show or just for now because of the pandemic, but for the rest of my life to make that change in which I become a more compassionate person from now on and forever. And to take the lessons learned and to emerge as a better person, to emerge as a more thoughtful person, to take the lessons and apply them with more wisdom, and not just for myself, but to teach those under my sphere of influence the same lessons, the lessons of compassion and of empathy and pity, lessons of looking out for our fellow man and taking heed and not turning a blind eye and not ignoring the misfortunes of others. And so as we go through this life, as we go through this walk of life, day to day, and not knowing what the next day will bring, I pray that you will have a change of heart, that there will be a heart transplant in which take that old 
uncaring, selfish, hardened heart, and that it will be replaced with a more compassionate heart. And that we will look out for the well-being of our fellow man, and that we will esteem each other higher than ourselves. Because that's what we were put here for. Because if we don't, who knows what will come along next. And it doesn't take 20 or 30 years to graduate from a high school. It doesn't take 20 or 30 years to pass a class. And one thing about schooling, if you don't pass the class, you will have to take it over and over and over and over again until you get the lesson. And my friend, time is of the essence. And with the unpredictability of life, we don't have time to cry ignorance or to turn a blind eye or to keep failing the class and not getting the lessons. Wisdom is taking the lesson and applying it to your life. And I pray today that we will all check our barometer of compassion and that we will become more compassionate people. Not just compassion for our family and our friends and our loved ones, but compassion for those in communities in which compassion was lost for such a long time. And the communities that I'm referring to is the gang-stalking community and the communities in which people suffer with chronic, severe illnesses that impact their immune system and that caused them to live in self-isolation. They know that story all too well. They know the story of loneliness. They know the story of being shut in. They know the story of being quarantined. Let's have more compassion for those communities. Let's know that we're all in it together and let's not leave any person behind and we're going to get through it together where different communities become one community. So keep the hope, keep the faith, pray more than ever before. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the like button, comment, and share. Stay blessed, stay strong, stay in peace. And we're all in this together. And as always, until we meet again, bye-bye, my friends.